Hey guys, me, Ronald Chris Tomer here on this Tuesday morning with this mountain weather update. Today's the big day for Wolf Creek. I'll take you over to X here. I posted this photo uh, that Wolf Creek sent out yesterday of some, some folks there who probably work for the resort skiing powder. Uh, I mean, they got about two feet of snow out of the last storm cycle. So they're the first resort in Colorado to open and, and to my knowledge, the first across the lower 48. Um, uh, to open officially, and they're going to be open seven days a week starting today. Now, uh, keep in mind, it, this time of the year, the temperatures can still warm significantly in the afternoon. I think the freezing level is going to be up to like 13 or 14,000 by this afternoon. So there is going to be some melting, um, e even at the highest of elevations in Colorado. All right, let me take you over to um, water vapor satellite imagery and just kind of give you the lay of the land. So oranges and reds on this are your drier air loft and then your moisture is right here. So everything's streaming in to the Pacific uh, Northwest and BC. There is a storm system back here. There's also a little bit of an area of spin um, kind of a sitting right in this area. That'll be a small low that comes racing through the northern tier tomorrow evening into Thursday morning with a lot of wind and a quick shot of snow. So we'll talk about both of those storm systems uh, in this update. Here are my bullet points this morning. So Idaho, Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, there is that clipper, that small, fast-moving storm system that'll come through late 1023 into the morning of 1024 with wind, a quick shot of wind. It'll be brief, but probably 50, 60, 70 mile an hour over the high peaks in those areas, and also a quick shot of light snow accumulation. So we'll look at that in a second. The other storm, the second one lined up for 1028, 1029 is more significant, and that one will come down and roll right through Montana, uh, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, and Colorado with accumulating snow. It could be moderate accumulations and with a couple of pockets of heavy so all of that, we'll look at it in this, this forecast update. First stop is the time height forecast. This is for Cameron Pass in the northern mountains of Colorado. Um, this is humidity in the atmosphere. All the vertical layers you can read the timeline at the bottom from right to left. Now, the one thing I want you to notice, other than the air is very dry, is you can see the compression, the folding there between uh, Wednesday night and Thursday morning. That's when that clipper is going to roll through Wyoming and it's going to really squeeze the pressure grating and the wind is going to blow pretty hard. You can see some of the wind barbs at 50, mile, 50 knots or stronger there through a lot of the vertical layers uh, across the high peaks, um, you know, 13 and above. So that's a windy scenario, not only for parts of Colorado, but northern Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana. Uh, looking down the road, here come the better chances for snow. This is Big Sky, Montana, and you can see it. Once we get to about the 27th, 28th, and beyond, the chances of accumulating snow all go up in Big Sky, Montana, and that's associated with that storm system around the, the 28th, 29th um, for Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, Utah, Colorado. So let me talk about the jet stream forecast here. That's the, the, the jet stream by close of business today. Everything's streaming up into the, uh, the Pacific Northwest and the northern tier. So by the time we get to Wednesday, very late in the day, you can see that little dip in the jet. That's that tiny clipper rolling through Idaho, Montana, uh, Wyoming, northern Utah, and then eventually Colorado by Thursday morning, and then it's gone. And then it's gone. Then we start to refocus, and here comes that larger storm system with the dip in the jet. There it is on the 28th and the 29th, and you can see it, a nice... A trough carved out in the upper levels and the jet stream level here and so that will allow some colder air to spill in and give us some some snow production here we are by the 30th and then as we roll into halloween um, a little quieter but i want to keep the, the door open for the possibility of another storm system very late in october and for the first week of number november i think the pattern may very well support that so we'll see how things change in the coming days um, here's the forecast radar and the, uh, the satellite. So here it is by 5.30 this afternoon. Not a lot going on other than a stream of clouds across um, the Intermountain West. So by Wednesday morning, there we are. Now by Wednesday afternoon, 5.15, you can see that front or that clipper diving down through the northern tier. And then by Thursday morning, there's your quick shot of snow for parts of Big Sky, the Tetons, and there's also going to be wind in northern Utah and parts of the central and northern mountains of Colorado. And then that just blows on through and then it's gone. Um, so then by 1025, here comes 1026. 
next storm system gathering moves into the Pacific Northwest BC and then it starts to make its move to the south. And here we are on the 28th and more widespread snows from BC to Montana, Idaho into Utah, all the way down to parts of Bryan Head. Uh, certainly a lot of snow in Wyoming and snow through the mountains of Colorado expanding in, in coverage into the 29th, continues on the 29th and the storm exits on the 30th and the storm track kind of sits up in the parts of BC. But we'll see what happens here. Um, Halloween and beyond, I think we might see another, um, another trough, another storm system drop down into the lower 48. So let me break down the snow accumulation in, in two time phases. So all of today through the 24th to capture this clipper, light accumulations, you can see the numbers generally one to three inches through parts of uh, Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho, and then that storm would move away. And of course, a lot of wind. Now here's the second phase, 1025 through 1031 Halloween, this gives you that, that second storm system. Um, so anywhere from five to eight up in the Tetons or more to Big Sky to the Wind Rivers, potentially six to 12 through the Wasatch. And in Colorado, could be six to 12 inches of accumulation as well. You can see the numbers there. Uh, Idaho, uh, Northwest Montana, a few inches of snow and pretty decent numbers up in the Pacific Northwest, parts of BC, anywhere in purple on this map is over a foot. So there's definitely going to be some accumulation. And at least we've got some storm systems to watch here for late October. I mean, there have been Octobers in the past where there is just nothing. So at least we've got something. And this pattern definitely mimics a early La Nina type or La Nina light type of pattern where everything is coming out of the Pacific Northwest, Northern tier, and really favoring those states where you see the accumulation happening on that map. So it seems like that's what we're settling into. All right, guys, I appreciate you tuning in here on this Tuesday morning. Always uh, just take care and have a great day.